let's start with a scenario where we have two categorical variables. It could be two nominal, two ordinal, or even a nominal and an ordinal. We would use cross tabs to examine the output. Cross tabs is really just a frequency distribution in two dimensions. It's a fancy way of saying, make a table where you cross the two variables. One variable goes in the columns and the other goes in the rows. Then you fill in the cells of the co-occurring frequencies. To see if there's a significant association, we use the chi-square test. The chi-square test essentially takes a cross-tab table and asks, based on the totals of each row and each column, if there were no association between these two variables, what would we expect the table to look like? It calculates this expected table, then compares it to the observed table cell by cell. The math here is simple enough that most of us could do it by hand easily, but I'm skipping over the math because I don't want to freak anyone out, and because the computer will do the math for us in an instant. Instead, I want you to focus on the conceptual elements. We use chi-square when we have two categorical variables, and what it's testing is whether what we observe in reality matches what we might expect to see theoretically. The more the observed and the expected diverge from one another, the greater the probability that there is a meaningful association between these variables. In its simplest scenario, we use a two by two table, but technically there's no limit to the table dimensions. Just note that the bigger the table, the harder to interpret the output. And the chi-square statistic only tells us whether there's a meaningful difference somewhere in the table it does not tell us where that meaningful difference sits. That's why two by two tables are the easiest to interpret. So if we have a larger table with a statistically significant association, we'll probably want to collapse it a bit to see where the key associations really live. Also, a word of caution. Chi-square is prone to error if you have cell values in your table that are at or near zero. This is more likely to happen in larger tables, so proceed with caution. Here are some examples. Let's start with a simple two by two table exploring gender and church attendance. Let's say we survey 100 members of a church about whether they attended religious services the prior week. 70 people indicated they did, while 30 indicated that they didn't. Further, 40 of our respondents are men and 60 are women. If there is no association, we'd expect a frequency table to look like this. But in reality, the table looks like this. Note that the first table is calculated based on our totals for each variable, but it's not the actual breakdown for those cells, just what we expect to see if these two variables are completely unrelated. The second table shows us what we actually found in our study. The chi-square test does its math magic and gives us three numbers. The chi-square statistic, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value. If we were doing this old school, that is, without computers, we would take the first two values and go to a chi-square distribution table to figure out the p-value. But the magic computer box lets us skip this step and we can jump to the p-value directly. Here, there is a less than a 0.1% chance that the association we see is due to randomness. So it seems safe to conclude that there is an association between gender and church attendance. Let's try an example with a slightly larger table. Imagine you run a wine store and you are curious about whether playing music on your sound system will help improve or modify sales in some way. On one day, you play no music. The next day, you play French accordion music. And on the third day, you play Italian string music. And you track not only total sales, but also type of wine sold. You put together your table, and you run the chi-square test on it. And it looks like there is an association. The question is, what is the association? It looks at first glance like the French music might be making the real impact, but you'd probably have to collapse that down to be absolutely sure. Here's one more set of examples, which will lead us into the assignment for this week. One of the keys to fully overcoming the COVID pandemic is getting people vaccinated. Let's look at data from a Gallup poll done in mid-September of 2021. 
That survey indicated that 75% of adults in the U.S. reported being vaccinated. And of that sample, 20% indicated they had no intention of being vaccinated. But did these numbers vary based on certain social characteristics? Let's break this down along a few dimensions. We can look at gender, and we can see that among men, 73% were vaccinated, 22% had no intention of vaccinating, and among women, 77% were vaccinated, and 18% had no plan of vaccinating. When we run the chi-square statistic on this, we see that there really is no association here. That's pretty much on par with what we'd expect to see if this were simply a random connection. So there's clearly not a significant gender difference when it comes to vaccination rates. We can also look at age bracket. And here the survey broke down age categories into the 18 to 34 band, 35 to 54 year olds, and those who are 55 and older. And you can see the associated proportions within each category based on vaccinated versus no plan to get vaccinated. As with gender, we see that there really isn't a statistically significant association here. We can also look at race. Now, race is a little bit complex, and we're going to play with this further in the analysis assignment for this week. But if we break it down into a simple binaristic category, non-Hispanic white and non-white adults, though it looks like non-white adults have a higher vaccination rate than non-Hispanic white adults, is that meaningful? The chi-square test tells us this association really is not that significant there's a pretty good chance that the differences in quotes that we see really aren't meaningful at all. Let's look at region. If we look across the country, are there regional differences across the U.S. in terms of where vaccination rates are higher or lower? While there are slightly higher vaccination rates in the north and the west versus the midwest and south, chi-square tells us that's not really a meaningful difference. Note that sometimes a null finding is still an important finding, and in this case, it's still an important finding. We don't see variations in vaccination status based on geographic region, based on gender, based on race, or based on age. What about by political affiliation? This is something that public health officials have been noting for well over a year, that there is a significant association between political affiliation and vaccination status. And chi-square analysis tells us that, yes, there is indeed a statistically significant association between these variables. People who identify as Republicans are significantly more likely to say no to a vaccination, whereas people who identify as Democrats or Independents are much more likely to be vaccinated, particularly those who identify as Democrats are much more likely to have been vaccinated. Unfortunately, this particular dimension is something we're not going to be able to explore in our analysis assignment for this week because the census does not collect information on political affiliation. But we will be able to look at vaccination status according to some of the other dimensions of social activity, and we'll also add a few more that aren't shown here as well. Now, the analysis assignment for this week is going to show you how to do this in R exactly, but the short version is you first need to create a two-way frequency table, and we've seen the tools for this. We'll talk through some examples. And then it's as simple as dropping that table into the chi-square test function and reading the output. So head over to the analysis assignment posted on iLearn, and we'll talk through some of the mechanics on this. We'll also walk through this live in class later this week.